So, apparently, Microsoft has announced their Surface Pro 3. The Surface Pro 3 is a 12-inch uh, tablet computer that obviously runs Windows 8, uh, professional actually, which is really nice because Windows RT is a complete mess. Actually, to be honest, I think Windows 8 in general is a complete mess. But you can take a look at my thoughts on Windows 8 video for that. Right now, I just want to discuss the Surface. The Surface is an interesting concept. They claim that this thing can, in fact, replace your laptop. So let's take a look at that. Not a bad spec list here. For $999, you get a 128-gig uh, Intel i5. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat with this. And actually, it has to do with Windows. And that is that Windows takes up a fair amount of the system memory. So much so that if you were to get, say, a 32-gig tablet, and I've already addressed this in my thoughts on Windows 8 video, but I am going to cover it here in case anybody's considering buying this. If you were to get a 32-gig tablet, you'd probably have about half of that available for user storage because Windows and the onboard applications combined take up roughly half of your storage. Yeah. Um, for anybody out there that is um, completely blind that might be watching this, the Surface is, like I said, it's a 12-inch device. It's um, obviously slate form factor. And if you have used a 12-inch netbook, take that screen away from the keyboard, and that's roughly the dimensions of this. Um, in fact, let me see if I can take a look here real quick. Um, here we are, technical specs. Let me zoom in so I can see this a lot better. Um, so tech specs, see if we can get some... Ah, here we go. So the dimensions are 11.5 by 7.9 by 0.36 inches. The weight is 1.76 pounds. The casing is vapor magnesium. Now I've held one of the surfaces before, and it feels... It's a very smooth surface. You may feel a physical... Windows logo on the back, I'm not sure. Um, but you'll probably feel about a quarter of the way up a line. And if you feel uh, on the back and on the side, if you feel, you may feel like there's a little, like a lid almost, kind of like a battery compartment. That's actually the rear stand, which is really, really cool if you think about it. Because what it allows you to do is you flip out the stand and... Obviously, it allows the tablet to stand up, but it's a very angle stand, which is really, really nice. Now, the tablet does come with a stylus. Now, if you're a screen reader user, you don't really have too much use for it. Although, excuse me, I must admit that I have never seen Windows 8 um, narrator... Um, I haven't had too much experience with it in a touch environment. Now, I have tested Narrator in the beta of Windows 8, but unfortunately, I had no touch hardware with which to experiment. Um, one possibility, and because it does run Windows, I could see the development being super easy for this application and widely available, is um, on, an, on your iPhone, they've got an application that helps you with handwriting, that might be one use for the stylus, is practicing your handwriting for signing checks and so forth. Um, but I digress. The device is accessible. Um, but here's, but that's not necessarily the main thing I wanted to talk about, though. They claim that you can replace your laptop and your tablet. So let's take a look at this. So $999 for 120 k 128 gig Intel i5. Let's compare that to the MacBook Air and we're going to take a look at the 11 and 13 inch uh, units. Excuse me, I bit my tongue. So, the 128 gig Intel i5. Now, here's something interesting. The frequency is available here. 
at 1.4 gigahertz. Let's still go back to the tech specs real quick with the service because I do not want to end up um, giving you false information. So let's take a look while we're here. Go back to the tech specs. See if we can get a frequency number on the processor. So it's Windows 8.1 Pro. Oh, here's what I was talking about regarding the space. Let's say 164 or 128 gigs storage with 4 gigs of RAM or 512 gig with 8 gigs of RAM. So we're going to, like I said, we're comparing the 128 gig. Here's the deal. If you have 128, the 128 gig version, you've got 96 gigs of available disk space. Now that's not too bad, but on the 32 inch, uh, 32 inch, 32 gig uh, Windows 8 devices, it's really cramped in terms of storage. But if you go 128 or higher, you should be fine. Um, it's got 802.11ac, 9 hours of battery life, not bad. So again, like I said, we're looking specifically for the processor. Huh. Well, I'll be darned. There is, as far as I can see here, there's no frequency information on the processor. Hmm. Weird and strange. Um, so... 999 for the Intel Core i5, so both of these are pretty much in line with each other. However, and you probably noticed I hit the wrong tab, we got the 999. That's for a full computer. The MacBook Air is a full computer. Windows, uh, Microsoft says you can replace your tablet with it, okay? So let's go ahead and add a tablet into the mix. So I've taken the 128 gig iPad just to have a comparison in, free, in um, space. 799. For the 128 gig Wi-Fi only iPad. Now, for $200 more, you're getting a full-on Windows computer that is in a tablet. Um, to be honest, it'll be really interesting to see how this thing sells. The first few generations of Surface were not not real deal breakers. If anything, Microsoft lost. Um, help me out here with the figures, guys. Was it one one point something million write-off on these things for unsold inventory? Um, so I really don't know what to tell you as far as how well these things are going to do. Given the history, um, given the history with these things. Time will only tell. But I think that a lot of it has to do with Windows. Um, on a tablet, and a 12-inch tablet at that, perhaps this hybrid interface might work with the touch screen and the full-on desktop because you've got a big enough screen to where it won't be near as much of a chore to work with. It'll be interesting to see what happens when I can actually get my hands on one of these in a store and take a look at it. The only major problem, assuming this um, hybrid user interface thing does get fixed or, and is at least usable with a 12-inch screen, there's only one other thing that I'm not too sure about, and that has to do with Skype. Um, I've, been a, I've been on Skype for almost 10 years now, and this was way back before Skype was owned by Microsoft. If you use Skype on anything other than a Windows PC, you will not be required to sign in with your Microsoft ID. However, if you sign into Skype, at least the Metro interface version of Skype, on a Windows 8 computer, um, you're forced to use your Microsoft ID. Now, I can't speak to the desktop version because I haven't touched that in a long time. So that's one of my concerns. And the other one, um, in Windows 7, I had pretty good experience, uh, pretty good luck with Windows Defender as far as scaring off all the bad things. But in terms of Windows 8, I'm curious about how Defender has progressed. I would certainly like to take a look at one of these, see how things go. In terms of price, for a tablet it's expensive, but you have to remember what you're getting. I think it's very much in line with... Um, comparable devices, and we'll just have to see how things go. There's only one other caveat with this thing, 
And that is, if I can find it, where are you? Actually, yeah, let me let me go back. There we go. The type cover. For those of you who cannot see, think of a think of the um, if you have an iPad, think of the smart cover. Add maybe a fraction of an inch of thickness, and give it a full QWERTY keyboard. Now I've typed on the current Surface um, type cover. It's actually not a bad little keyboard at all. Assuming that the display units are working, I've had very, very good luck with this. Um, very nice feedback. It definitely looks portable enough. Now, what, what's the caveat then if I like this type cover so much? Simple. Why doesn't it come with the device, or at the very least, it gives you an option to order it with the device? Now, I can see Microsoft pulling out an argument saying that the enterprise sector for whom they might be targeting this will probably say, oh, you probably already have a keyboard, a wireless keyboard that you can use. And that's fair. You know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. But that doesn't excuse them from at least having the option to include this keyboard. Now, if they don't do that, um, then you're looking at an additional 129 for this keyboard, which, I don't know, I just think that maybe if they were to price it at maybe $75 or something, I just don't think it's worth an additional $150 when the pricing of the tablet itself is already right in line with current generation MacBook Airs and you get a stylus. Um, that's another thing that I do like about the Surface, by the way, is the stylus, the fact that you can write on it. Now, that's one thing I'm considering going back to an iPhone for accessibility purposes for the holidays because my contract is up about then. But one thing I will miss on my Galaxy is the ability to write directly on the screen. Uh, that's one thing that I love about the Surface is you just push. Supposedly you get this pen, push a button on top, and it opens up Microsoft's OneNote uh, application. Now... That'll be very interesting to see how this goes. I could see a definite um, production case for this where if you're trying to fill out some paperwork, say a graduate application, you could very easily fill it out using OneNote if it'll read PDFs. Um, keep in mind I have not used OneNote, so I cannot speak to the compatibility of any file formats. But you see where I'm going with this. So the Surface is... Um, if I had to give a final judgment on the surface, shall we say, between a rock and a hard place? But what do you guys think? Do you think there's potential here? One of the beautiful things is that it will run, for those of you who are screen reader users, this is a full, this is literally a full Windows PC in something about the size of an iPad Air. Maybe a little bit, well, it's bigger than an Air, but you get the idea. It's, it's a full PC in something the size of a tablet, which means... If you want to run JAWS, you can run JAWS. If you want to run, um, if you want to run Zoom text, you can run Zoom text. I'm actually very interested in trying Supernova because it's the first magnification solution that allows for uh, pinch to zoom across the entire system for magnification. That's something the iPad does not have. So it'll be very interesting to see what the market thinks of this device, how well it's going to going to to uh, uh, to be received. Um, I think at the moment we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but what do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.